Um, hi, everyone. Uh, good morning. Thanks for being here. It's, uh, it's a pretty cool thing to get to do a workshop on Whimsy. Um, so I thought I'd say a few words about like what this is and why we're all here. Um, the goal of this workshop is really just to focus on giving you a set of tricks and tools you can use to build whimsical things. So the first thing, first topic, it's a pretty big topic. Um, we're going to talk about routing and navigation in React Native apps. Perfect. Uh, let's get started. So um, we're actually going to be, I'm going to be just walking through a quick example. Uh, not so quick, probably. Um, so reanimate, I guess before I start, just a brief intro to what reanimated is. Um, so as we've constantly been mentioning uh, animations, for them to really run at the smoothest that they can possibly be, uh, they really shouldn't cross the uh, React Native's bridge uh, over and over, especially on a frame-by-frame -frame basis. That's not a great move. So our solution, as we saw in some of the animated examples, was to use this native driver, which allows you to declare your animations in your JavaScript code, but when they actually end up running, they don't need to cross that barrier. They run entirely in native. This is kind of just like sharing your code from iOS, Android, and now web. And uh, just kind of like some of the things that we've done to make that work better, and then some of the like prior approaches. Uh, I'm. Evan Bacon. I work with Brent over at Expo, uh, and I'm also like a Lego artist, and that's enough about that. So let's talk about React Native for web. We're going to start off by creating a new, Re uh, a new React app, and um, we're going to be creating a React application. We're going to then be adding an Amplify project within that React app, and then we're going to be adding and, and removing and updating features within that application. Um, at the end of all of this, we're going to then just delete everything, or we're going to show you how to, so you have the option to do that if you do, uh, do want to or not. But at the end of all of this, um, you're, you shouldn't have any resources left in your account if you choose, if you choose to do that. What is GraphQL? How many of you have heard about GraphQL? I expect all of you heard about GraphQL because you're here in the GraphQL workshop, right? So at least you have heard about the world. So how many of you are using GraphQL in production? I like how <laughs> people lower their hand when they said production. Uh, cool. Hopefully after this workshop, you'll be able to either move your existing stack to GraphQL or at least experiment with GraphQL in, in your um, working environment. And it will be beyond just like simple projects and uh, playing around with that at home. Um, reason offers a JavaScript developer friendly syntax. This is, um, at least to me, it was really relevant. Um, when I started out, that wasn't the case, but um, coming from a, um, a JavaScript background, um, this is made it like the, the, the uh, syntax changes over a year ago uh, to make it even more look like JavaScript uh, made it really, really um, compelling to me and, and easy to adopt it. Um, how does this look like? I can do let meaning of life um, is 41 plus 1. Um, straightforward. Um, I can, uh, we can define functions. Um, let's say uh, we have an add function, so we can just pass in two things and uh, two numbers. Um, in this case, actually integers, um, and then we can uh, uh, basically uh, create um, new values. We have lists. Uh, that said, we also have arrays. Lists are immutable. Arrays are immute. Uh, arrays are mutable. But we're going to talk about this a little bit later. So let's talk about classes, how exciting they are. Um, I'm going to touch on classes, but only, uh, only very brief briefly, because there are not that many surprising uh, things in them. Um, but th there, are, there are some things which aren't available in uh, vanilla JavaScript. So um, that does make them interesting. 
Um, so just to uh, mention all of them. So first of all, there are um, field assignments or field initializers. Um, they're not available in standard JavaScript. Uh, some Babel presets do allow it. Um, but in TypeScript, they have been always available. Today, in summary, um, we will uh, deep dive in uh, React, but uh, from the hooks perspective. Uh, so uh, we will uh, start from the beginning with uh, the stage, uh, the terms, the primitives of uh, React. Then um, we will see the life cycle, the, the effects, uh, how to deal with uh, Redux and uh, how to avoid the uh, Redux um, and uh, at the end the uh, DOM interactions. So let's start with with which plugins. Um, what's a um, so so it just comes with a um, with a plugin system to uh, it's actually just watch plugin system and. Uh, it's, it provides us a way to hook into specific parts of just watch mode. Um, you, uh, it, it also defines custom uh, menu prom prompts that execute code on keypress, and they allow you to um, develop interactive experiences uh, custom to your workflow. So you can either create your own watch uh, watch plugin or download a like a pre-made one from the community because Yeah, so there was a question about um, what was the motivation for Reverie? Like why Reverie versus just an Electron app with React, for example? Because it's a uh, pretty similar end result. Um, 